I inserted my card into the ATM, and when the machine was about to dispense my cash, it just died. Hello, fellow procrastinators of the world. It's me. I'm back. But at what cost? We're going to be painting two flower paintings today, and you're probably wondering why flower paintings and two of them specifically? Like, didn't we just paint one flower one month ago? Well, I'm going to explain. It's because mom is obsessed with the four seasons. Like, one time she went to this house and that house had four paintings on the stairs and each one of those paintings portrayed one season out of the four. And so she turned to me, her only daughter, and she asked me, Hey, can you paint this for our house? And I was like, but mom, I don't like painting trees. And she was like, okay, then just paint some flowers, I guess. And I was like, all right. And that's basically how this came to be. However, this conversation happened one month ago. It's almost June. Unfortunately, I was too busy in art school, so I wasn't able to do all four of them. So for now, we're only going to do two, and then maybe I'll try doing the other two sometime in the future. Who knows? That's it for the intro. I'm done explaining. I'm going to study for my exams now. I hope you enjoyed the video. See ya! I started this painting the same way I start most of my work, which was by buying my support, aka the four canvases I was going to need for what originally were four paintings I was supposed to work on. Initially, I planned on commuting home because, well, I'm a strong independent woman who don't need no man, but that idea lasted for about two and a half minutes before I decided that I did in fact need a man. In this case, it was the guy who drove the taxi that would take me home. After subjecting myself to 15 minutes of heavy traffic, on Edsa, I saw this man just sleeping at the back of a truck? That looks dangerous. And then I finally got to work. It never comes off cleanly, does it? I said, like I'm trying to be relatable. I sure hope I'm not out of focus right now because that would suck. That was a spoiler, by the way. I'm a fraud, so I'm going to grid this. I wish I could draw freehand like the master's can, but... I'm not allowed to make mistakes. I'm a little early. Can you even see that properly? That's why I'm not in studio arts. The color is very suspicious, let's just say that. Haha, <laughs> that's so funny. Pee pee poo poo wee wee, am I right? Ah, oh my god, that's not the beauty at all. Oh. And so I added more water to my burnt sienna to make it apply more smoothly. Can you even see what I'm doing? Yes, we can. Get back to work. <laughs> now that's just carpal tunnel syndrome speedrun. Hey, Anna, you can just use a bigger brush. I don't have a bigger brush than that. I'm sorry for being a Please donate to my coffee. <gasps> oh! Finally, I made quick work of the rest of the canvas. I'm done painting. Thanks for watching. I started painting on 6 inch by 6 inch grids. At first, I was like, oh, I'm gonna do 3 by 3s, but then I remembered that I'm far too lazy for that, let's be real. Oh. My bad. Clumsy. This kind of looks. Yeah. How very mature. Oh, right! I never did show the reference, did I? It's this pink flower. It's from Leah on Twitter. Thank you, Leah. But I edited the aspect ratio a bit to make it look better on my canvas. Using more burnt sienna and some black, I began painting the silhouette of the foreground. I was feeling anxious at this point because I didn't think I'd be able to finish this one painting before the filming of our student film, which, by the way, I haven't started editing the footage of as of recording this audio and Filming the student film took a really long time. So yeah, I just skipped the pencil sketch and went straight to painting. The look I was going for for this painting was... Imagine a fourth grader who at 11 p.m. just remembers that they have an art project due the next day and then they proceed to cram it and see how it goes. Yeah, like that, but 
slightly more detailed because it would be a waste to paint otherwise. You guys already know the drill. I painted an underpainting to help with my values, make it look warm underneath. And then I proceeded to paint the more exciting colors on top. I'm glad I bought pink last time. It really helped with making my colors appear less muddy because otherwise if I just mixed my own colors, sometimes it ends up being gray? <laughs> Having a troop of the correct local color means that you don't have to spend time trying to mix colors on your palette too, so it also saves time. I did my best to get myself out of the ugly face as fast as possible because I was feeling very impatient. I mean, this canvas was kind of big after all, so... I went ahead and painted the water droplets immediately. The grid didn't really apply to the flower anymore. I kind of just gauge where each droplet was with my eyeballs. <laughs> Thankfully, since this is a flower and not a face, I didn't really need to paint a one-to-one -one replica of the photo or the painting to look somewhat realistic. Or not realistic. More like accurate-ish? Personally, I found painting these petals both easier and harder than I expected. I looked at the reference photo once before getting started on this project and I foolishly thought that recreating the delicate texture of the petals on canvas would be a piece of cake, like just dab your brush on the canvas in it. But boy oh boy did I think wrong. So I quickly gave up on realism and just went for whatever. On the other hand, painting the droplets was very fun. I felt like as long as you had a basic understanding of how light and shadow work, you could easily paint the droplets yourself without looking at the reference photo. I sighed in relief after finishing off the water droplets because they looked somewhat decent. And then I added a bunch of white on the petals to make them look shinier and wetter and then I finally started to paint the background. Painting the background was pretty straightforward. It was just a bunch of dark paint over more dark paint which is what I prefer painting anyway. I think the painting really started coming together the moment I added the darkest shades in the background as it made the foreground pop. Thankfully, I could still see the remnants of the grid that I made so I wasn't too lost this time because I still had a guide to follow. By now, you're probably wondering, Hey Hannah, since you said that painting this one flower already took you a long time and you hated it, why didn't you just load up your brush with two different colored paints at once and then do the gradient brush stroke thing that most flower artists on the internet do? Well, there's actually a very simple answer to that. It's because I'm stupid. The aperture on the photo was rather large because the background was sort of blurry even though the leaves were kind of close to the flower. So I alternated between making my edges sharp and blending them out. For the extra blurry bits, I just added random blobs of paint, buffed them out, and hope for the best. Also, remember how acrylics tend to dry dark sometimes? Well, I forgot to take that into consideration, so my background was extra dark after this. It would probably become even darker when I apply gloss varnish, but that would be a problem for future me. I ended up painting everything in a counterclockwise motion, which was neat. Actually, no, that wasn't really anything to take note of. I've just run out of things to say about this painting at this point. I'll show the grand reveal towards the end of the video because right now, both the paintings on the video are already hung up on our wall and I can't be bothered to take them down and take pictures of them and then edit. <laughs> Sorry. I painted the rest of the leaves and then I finally painted the edges of the canvas black. This footage was originally severely out of focus but I cranked up the sharpness on Premiere Pro and that somehow fixed it. I mic'd myself up just to say one thing. It's not the best but it's also not the worst. Which pretty much just means I'll take it! The date was May 1st. Abyss has just refreshed so I quickly did that. Don't worry about my Raiden's HP, my Zhongli is C6 so she got her HP back soon enough. Next up, I went to Intramuros! I took the train because, well, there was the easiest way to get there. <laughs> I almost stumbled trying to get that shot. I went to Silahis. It was humid outside but I walked the entire way anyway. But look at that interior though! Silahis is an antique shop that my classmate recommended as a place to shoot one of our film sequences and I went there in person to confirm our filming appointment because the boss was sick and couldn't answer our email. The place was just too beautiful to pass up. Plus they allow students to film there for free. 
Then, the lonely trek out of Intramuros. It started raining at this point. Then I stood there for a while like an idiot just to reminisce. The last time I went here of my own accord was back in 2017. I took photos of the Manila Cathedral as a reference for the background of this drawing for a zine. Back then, I was a miserable bio student, but now I'm a less miserable art student. How nice! Whee! I went to Divisoria after that, by the way. I won't show you my haul because none of the stuff I bought ended up getting used, but here are some Genshin figures. The following week, my classmates came over to film. <laughs> And then this happened. Hello, it's May 11 and it's 11.25 p.m. I know this is supposed to be a painting video, but I want to segue to this um really quick segment. Okay, so here's the thing. We're having the final part of our shoot tomorrow and something's wrong with the prop that we originally had because our knife was too small for the scene. So I decided to craft a ceremonial dagger of sorts out of EVA foam and um, the canvas is already prepped but I think this takes precedence over the flower painting so I mean I'm already done crafting I just have to paint it now it's really scuffed but in a pinch it would have to do it would appear for like five seconds in the film it doesn't really matter so yeah that's the state of affairs right now in this household don't worry I'll get back to painting soon bye and this is how it ended up looking after I painted it eh, it's all right looks close enough to wood and this is where we use it i was cult member number one that night i thought i deserved good food so i got karage with the film finally out of the way i could start working on the second flower painting since the last painting turned out so well i was feeling pretty zen confident even here's the reference photo for this painting by the way it's by ari on twitter thank you ari the subject is backlit so i began the process by painting some white <gasps> Already, you can tell that I messed up the silhouette. <laughs> There's also this golden light coming through my windows, and it looks really aesthetic on camera, but this lighting was actually a pain to work with because it was too bright, it messed up my sense of values, and my wet paint kept on reflecting it, and it just blinded me. Painting the stems and the leaves were simple enough, I just drew a stick and some curves and called it a day. I also began lightening up parts of the canvas where the brightest lights would later be painted on, and then I was like, hey, I'm already here, I might as well darken the darkest spots while I'm at it. The depth of field in the reference photo was extra shallow, so I made everything very loose. Too loose, in fact. My underpainting was no longer accurate to my reference. And then, like a buffoon, I began rendering the flower. Oh my god, I don't want to record voiceover for this part. <laughs> Look at the amount of white acrylic paint that I wasted. My colors were horribly inaccurate. I can usually color match pretty decently, but I guess this time my eyes were broken. And already I got the scale of the middle part of the flower all wrong. <laughs> I tried painting the other flower in hopes that I could fix it, but that's just wishful thinking. I already know that it didn't work. I spent the next 30 minutes trying to fix my mistakes and no avail. Both my colors and shapes were a mess and so was my mental state. And then and there, I made a decision. I decided to paint the background first. Why did I say that like that's such a grandiose moment? It's just a painting. I forgot to mention, I bought a tube of Naples yellow for this and it's putting in all the work. I was so glad I didn't have to mix the right shade of yellow manually because none of the yellows I had were the right color and it did help ease the chaos of what's happening a bit because otherwise I probably would have lost it by then. It did end up looking okay in the end but the background also emphasized how bad my initial rendering of the flowers was. My arm hurt a lot afterwards, let's just say that. At this point, I was sick of painting flowers. So I animated some socks, and then I assisted in the Genshin cosplay shoot. <laughs> Oh, 
na maalam ba yun? Sa vision kasi eh. Okay. <laughs> I never got by you. Plus, I still haven't post-processed any of the photos from that shoot. My bad! Back to the painting. I fixed the bokeh and tried to make it look more convincing and, well, I just painted some more, honestly. I don't have much to say about this part, so let me just tell you guys a story. Remember how I painted Chilean a month ago and how I went to the dentist after that? Here's what happened that day. So I got two teeth removed, right? And I was drooling blood, as you do under anesthesia post tooth extraction. Originally, I planned on taking a taxi home because I felt weird, plus I looked like a vampire drooling blood all over the place. But ultimately, I ended up just taking the train home because the train is far cheaper and faster. Also, I didn't have much cash on hand, so I just stuffed some tissues underneath my mask. I went to the mall near our house to buy ice cream and antibiotics, but I remembered that I had to withdraw cash from the ATM so that I would have something to pay with. I inserted my card into the ATM, then I entered my PIN, I entered the amount of money that I was going to withdraw, and when the machine was about to dispense my cash, it just died. <laughs> it just died. And then and then it eventually came back to life, but it didn't dispense both my card and my cash, which means I just lost my debit card and my access to physical money. I also lost like 1000 pesos. The ATM I used and the debit card that I had were from two different banks, so I lost another 200 pesos trying to call two different customer service hotlines. <laughs> So stupid. The person from the bank with the ATM told me that the standard procedure for cases like mine was once they retrieve my card, they're going to have to destroy it for security purposes because the back was unsigned. <laughs> also, the maintenance of the ATM was pre-scheduled so it's not like someone from the bank could open the ATM and yank the card out and return it to me anytime. I was crying at this point. Like, I legit cried in front of this ATM. <laughs> I even kneeled on the ground because I was so sad. <laughs> the anesthesia was wearing off. I could barely speak because my mouth was still numbed and filled with gauze. And I just lost my money. Like, who could blame me for not keeping it together? <laughs> then I called the other bank to cancel my card. I was holding back sniffles. When I called that bank, I was like... <laughs> Permanent lock na po ng card go please something like that <laughs> i ended up not having any cash for an entire week after that the lesson of the story the shillian curse does not apply to cosplayers only apparently it also applies to the artists i hope you liked that story I can laugh about it now, but I was absolutely miserable back when it happened. I added more circles for the bokeh, and then... And then I could finally fix this cursed flowers, Jesus Christ. Now that my background was pretty much finished, I had a basis on how bright I was supposed to make my shadows look, as well as a better understanding of how I ought to mix my colors. I began by erasing most of the work that I already did by using white that I tinted with a bit of Naples yellow. See how the flowers look like they're starting to glow against the background? That's what I was trying to go for previously, but I didn't succeed in doing. <laughs> Afterwards, I finally mixed the correct shade of grayish blue for the shadows on the upper flower. You know what? I'll just shut up and let you guys see for yourselves what happens.
I think I finished painting around 3 in the morning and then when I woke up, I immediately proceeded to paint the sides with grey. While I left the sides to dry, I went to a Wang Shan event at MOA. <laughs> I was like... I'm tired of thinking about ACADs. I want to meet up with people who are not related to academics. And well, here I am. <laughs> and here's the grand reveal that I promised. As always, thank you for watching!